And with that, folks, we're in. This is a best of one tiebreaker match between Complexity and Cloud9. Cloud9 having a bit rougher uh, time in the bracket than most people thought, and that's what put them in this position. And Complexity also with their recent roster shuffles having maybe a bit more trouble seconds. than their TI yeah. run. Either way, I'm Llama Down Under, I'm joined by PQMZ. I hope this is a good game and not one of those kind of like 17-minute games down. that you sometimes see in best of ones. How are you feeling, PQ? Complexities I'm good, and the feeling's mutual. It should be a good game because I feel like these teams are fairly evenly matched, at least in terms of strategy. Maybe the players are slightly better on one side at times. Yeah, I also think that there's definitely a bit of a disadvantage from the standpoint of complexity hasn't, uh, this is a bit of a newer roster for them. And one of their players is Vlad, is playing from Russia. So, you're not exactly winning the ping wars. Jesse's in the US right now though, isn't yeah, he? So Jesse he's is. still on low ping. So. Got the first two Jaro. Let's hope it works like it did for OG yesterday. Yeah, um, this first pick gyrocopter, it's something we've seen some teams have great success with and other teams make it look like he's not a first round pick, but the Tusk, we've all already seen, we've seen both a great Tusk out of MSS and 1437, so this Tusk I know is going to have a lot of impact. Tusk is just one of those Ten really strong heroes three. right now, and if you don't see him in the first two, you're pretty sure he's getting banned. Five seconds remaining. An overall really strong hero right now. Yeah. The immediate Dazzle pickup, though, not always someone we see maybe as the first pick. Although I guess it makes sense here with Darkseer and SF being banned out. You know, Darkseer is highly prized. I guess Dazzle makes sense as well. I wonder whether Complexity will be forced to ban out something like the AA. Yeah, AA is really good with Tusk, Gyro, and teamfights. But... I would be surprised if they don't opt for the Slardar here. It's like the generally pretty standard opening, Dazzle Slardar, Tusk plus one. Yeah, it's definitely something where you've got a crap ton of minus armor, and unless your opponents end up picking up a Lich, it's not going to be a nice time for them. Makes Gyrocopter- oh Yeah, there's Doom. Yes, that's what we've been missing out, and Complexity actually goes for the Lich instead. Cloud nine. Okay, this is a bit of a- to ban. And the anti mage, even though they have a gyro, that's got to be some inside information. Yeah, I now am a little bit confused. I think it might just be a case of Ritsu Ten not remaining. playing. They don't expect him to play the gyro. Very hard to run remaining. him mid, though. You know, it's like I guess you could run him in duels Reserve and time. put the anti-mage in the either the safe lane and the gyro in the off lane. Very odd, and as you point out, kind of a weird ban out, but not something. It might also be indicative that Complexity plans on picking up Lashrac. Yeah, maybe something Come along those lines. Turn to ban. I, I think that's the only reason you'd ban it out. Like, this is a specific hero in your draft you want, like Medusa or Storm, the anti-mage just runs over. Yeah. But opting for both supports over getting, like, the Slider or the Doom just feels really seconds. weird. They obviously have an idea of what they want to do, but showing these supports this early, it gives Cloud9 a lot of versatility in their course. And I feel like if they don't ban the Doom here, it's being picked up Reserve since Cloud9 time. has the first pick out of the phase. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Maybe Slider as well. It might be more prioritized for Cloud9. It has better synergy with both the heroes as opposed to Doom. But when Cloud Complexity ban the Doom, they leave the Slardar open. I think though they're a bit more prepared for the Slardar. Picking up Dazzle and Lich, they're saying, hey, we're going to deal with this minus armor already. And just so folks know the lineup, I'm pretty sure Val more Gallus is Ten seconds Ritsu. Remaining. I want to say it's Ritsu. That's not the image I remember him having, but that is neither here nor there. I'm pretty Five sure it's Ritsu as the lineup of Cloud. I think he's an anime nerd, so it would Well, that sense. name isn't exactly an anime nerd, but anyway. Uh, it's... I don't know. It's something, right? Oh, uh, it's Game of Thrones. Uh, 1437, MSS, Ritsu, Brax, and SVG, or Savage. And then on Complexity, we have Swindle Melons, Zizzy, Chessy, who's staying with them at the team house, I think, right now. Z Freak and Vlad, who is uh, the Cloud support player. Nine, Chessy generally playing mid, but we've seen them swap it up and have Swindle on mid, Chessy on offlane. So, just I for think folks. that was just for a brood game, though, wasn't it? It may have just been for a brood game, but I think it's always powerful to have your team have really flexible hero pools. So. 
Yeah, and it's similar to certain heroes not being Complexities certain players' pulls. Yep. Like, I, I can't remember who it was, but there were teams that would like, maybe they'd have a Meepo player that, as the, like their off laner, and then their carry would swap or something. It's As you say, can you just mess with team's heads in the draft? Yeah, team Secret and OG do it a bit both so and yeah so sorry folks i forgot to put my settings to in-game mic so i just fixed that Ten oh i remaining. i've been doing so well anyway we got the bane pickup and this both drops Five to seconds, me just feel remaining. a little bit weird normally you see the bane come out after complexity would have shown a mobile Reserve hero time. perhaps cloud nine just feel from the anti-mage ban that it has to be a storm spirit or something and bane is going to make you not want to be that storm spirit as much because of the lockdown of fiend's grip but this draft feels really weird I think Cloud9 getting the Bane is its a really safe option because Bane, Tusk, are, they're a solid support duo. You can do multiple things with them. The Tusk can go offlane, which I'm kind of favoring right now as they manage to get Doom and Slider both banned out the pool. they are one or two offlaners, but Tusk is definitely one of the stronger ones right now. And Bane's just good at dealing with aggressive lanes, which is probably what Complexity will look for with the Lich. Yeah, and it's the Templar Assassin, okay. Cloud Nine's turn to pick. Still not quite understanding why the anti mage was banned out. <laughs> um, she's not even. Maybe it's just some inside information or something yeah. they just don't want to play against. Like maybe they've lost to it in a few scrims or something, and they just don't want to have to deal with it. Yeah, entirely possible that these teams, I mean, we know that they scrim quite a bit. Also, just for info, this is a tiebreaker to see which of these teams goes into playoffs. There are further playoffs to see remaining. who actually qualifies for the Star Ladder LAN. It isn't Five winner of this goes remaining. to the LAN. So this is just in this group, Complexity and Cloud9 managed to be tied. I Reserve believe time. Archon is the other slot who gets through Alchemist. to the playoffs. And it's an Alchemist! So Alchemist, Complexity Templar, Assassin, an interesting matchup where generally TA can, you know, she's going to get those refractions burned through by Acid Spray, but she can still get some lost hits. She's just going to have to Bottle Crow really aggressively. Yeah, I think it's definitely TA favored just because Elk's stats aren't the best and his back. ability to last hit is definitely like, a lot lower than the TA's. Unless he manages to get some help, like a Bane and Feebling, the TA could definitely swing the matchup. Favor. Now we've got a broodmother, and we hate seeing this hero picked into an Alk. If, I don't know if it's. I don't think this is one of the games where you can Five run the broodmother mid. Remaining. You're forced to run her off lane because if she's mid against the Alk, the Alk just has a grand old time and. Reserve time. I'm. I like the brood though because. Bane's not very good at dealing with a brood. Dyra has trouble for the early levels. And Brood's also exceptionally good at man fighting like Elk, Gyro, until they get like a heavy advantage item wise. Yeah. So it's gonna Delicious be. Delicious also Ten being. Sorry, go on. Oh no, I was just gonna say it's it's a really interesting game because as Tusk gets levels, yeah, Five he can deal with it, remaining. but you're right, for right now the Brood should be able to roll them. You were saying about Cloud Lich? Turn to pick. Yeah, Lich could be the X Factor. If he goes bottom with the Brood, it, or maybe mid with the TA, he, he can cause a lot of disruption for Cloud9. Yeah. Right now, he doesn't have a set place, which is kind of weird for most drafts, but I like the fact that he, he can go different lanes. Yeah, now for Cloud9, what do you think they need? I am not sure Ten still if this is a support remaining. tusk or offlane tusk. They could certainly try for a clockwork on Cloud9. They could go for quite a few things. As you said, the tusk could be support or offlane. At the moment, I think I'd favor a support tusk because of the ability to catch the brood and both the supports from complexity are fairly squishy. If you manage to catch them out, he can do quite a lot. But it's just a question of which offlane they feel like. Clock is still in the pool. There's still something like Bristle if you wanted to go for an aggressive tri-lane with the main gyro tusk and put the Bristle against brood. Maybe do something similar with Sven, but I don't think that's as good here. I'll see, maybe. Although, Sven might have shop. some... As you, you said, it might not be as good, but he might have some advantages. We've seen the offlane Sven before with that plus armor from the Warcry. We've seen that be pretty dang good against these minus armor strats, but it's the clock, the boring option. Complexity. I do feel like it's pick. a solid pickup here. I think it's 
something where occasionally if the broodmother's really on point you can blo block the hooks with the baby spiders but i don't think we'll be seeing too much of that here definitely possible but it, it's something that's really hard to do it's more just a scouting mechanism if you see him you know the hook could possibly be coming but i like the clock that's a less greedy core that can Ten get something done while his other two cores are farming they'd have gone for Five like something else that i listed remaining. their line it would have been exceptionally greedy yeah, it is something where, as Reserve you said, time. if they had the Sven, I mean, you're running three cores, you've got Alchemist who wants everything on the map, Gyrocopter who Five really needs quite remaining. a lot before he's right-clicking. You can run the Sven as more of a mobile Sven that just gets up Blink Dagger and kills people by storm hammering them, but maybe not the thing. And this is going to be a carry Queen of Pain. So this will be super interesting to see exactly what falls out here. I'm... I was pretty Person. sure they were going to put Chessy on the brood, but I wasn't sure how the rest of it would fall out. I, I could see multiple lanes happening here, but right now, my perception is... Pop's going to... It's played by Zizzy, which is like their carry player, but... I have a feeling they want to put the Quop and the Lich bottom to try and put some pressure. Lich is kind of susceptible in that lane, but they can't actually kill the Quop. So she, she can... We should go down there and get as much farm as the Lich allows her to with the lane positioning. They're actually smoking, they're going for level 1 Roche. They've I really like it. This best of one. I did not know this was going to be a lineup that could do level 1 Roche, and I have no idea how long this will take them. Templar Assassin rocking just the slippers of agility, using that meld strike a little bit before everybody gets in there. And I don't think Cloud9 has a good idea of this. They've already gone for the- oh goodness gracious. Oh my god, the DM. I know, it's, I don't think it's BM, that, that's I think- a bit too early, honestly, for the smiley faces. That, that might tip someone off. This, yeah, this pause could screw up everything for poor complexity here. This is... Okay, we have a yeah, pause I... though, let's quickly introduce the players, because we, we have to keep our eyes on the Roshan. Cloud9, we've got 1437 on that Bane, who MSS has claimed he will sacrifice to the interview gods, which is us, if they win. Brax on the Alchemist, so it's a carry Alchemist, unlike the support Alk we saw them running the other day. MSS on the Clockwork. Gyrocopter's going to be played up by Ritsu, and Tusk on Savage, tossing it over to you for complexity, who are all thankfully grouped up together. We've got Swindle on the TA, Zizzy on the Quaff, the stand-in Chessy on the Brood, who ended up going for the passive level 1, yeah. Z-Freak on the Lich, and the stand-in Vlad. I'm not sure if he's actually an official member, but he... the Russian support player. Yeah, he's Vlad playing for the them a crap ton, and I don't think Cloud9 have any idea this is going on. It's a really I sneaky lineup. It. Uh, I think the- we caused it one together, I think- oh no, I don't think you were there yet. Yeah, we did. Or was it the really sneaky one where they only needed three? I think that is the sneakiest we've ever seen. There are pings coming out! Oh no, okay, that's pings from Complexity. Always hard to tell who's yellow and who's the, like, yellow-brown. And they're getting this, it's gonna be about 20 seconds before the creeps spawn. Good luck, have fun, might come out again. But it really- oh! <laughs> Ritsu! Ritsu's pissed. <laughs> Okay, well, that was really fun <laughs> to see. Let's do a quick look around at hero levels. They did distribute it completely evenly. I really thought when they called the only good ha luck have fun, they gave it away, but Zizzy... Okay, the only problem here, I have to say, is that skills and so on are going to be a bit weird for them, although they did just get level 2. Chessie should be fine. And they actually put the Aegis onto Chessie over here. It does feel like some of the itemization might be weird. I mean, you've got a Ring of Basilius on a Queen of Pain and no regen. You got Lich with one ward. Oh, he, he picked up some tangos, which aren't his. There's Zizzy's tangos, that's cute. So, does yeah, this affect that anything? Yeah, had a, had a heavy load work to start. <laughs> but how, how much does this affect anything? I mean, obviously the extra level, fantastic. It's, it's Yeah, so fantastic for complexity. Maybe, maybe though, Cloud9 can turn it around and we'll see. Uh, it's like the big thing is Chessie's level three already, and this is a lane Clockwork should do fine in for the first five to six minutes. Like he should be able to bully the brood away with his like superior last hitting, and he can spam rockets. But because of that, this lane's like automatically won by the brood. Yeah. Similar thing in mid. Like it's a fairly like fun matchup in the early stages. But if the TA has like the item advantage, she can outlast hit the elk. Same thing with. Uh, like the higher levels in refraction. Mm -hmm. And this tri lane as well, like having levels on the support, which would normally not have them, would just mean you can't play aggressive on them. 
Yeah. Very true. And as he's very advantage in your trilate, I'm just surprised that they didn't realize it on Cloud9. I felt like the talking from Complexity was just... The good it's luck really have fun. It's a sneaky lineup, though. They, yeah. Any lineup can do it, but this is obviously something they considered because they had the melt strike and like the incapacitating fight, which meant they didn't take too much damage. They killed it quick enough at well, as well that they got to their lanes. So they didn't miss anything. Oh, we have an engagement up top. Zizzy taking a lot of damage, but I think everybody's just going to walk away on the side. They may even be able to take down the gyrocopter. That's our first blood. And Ritsu goes down. Aegis, first blood, looking great for complexity. And I have to say, the other thing I love about their lineup, you mentioned it looks like a very sensible, normal lineup. Complexity ran this lineup against Cloud9 and didn't do the level 1 Roshan. So I think for Cloud9, you're looking at this lineup and you're saying, this looks pretty normal. What, was it the same lineup? Yes. It was the game, I don't know if you remember, they had Chessie on Broodmother, they put Swindle on the Templar Assassin. It wasn't the Queen of Pain, you're right, it was another hero, maybe the Gyro or something. Oh, we got a Courier Snipe, can Bane do it, needs another auto attack, this Courier's gonna juke, it's gonna jive, but it's gonna go down. And now, C9, they're gonna maybe lose 1, 4, 3, 7, but that is totally worth it for the Courier, will he even go down? He's oh, walking it off, he's getting right. bottled up, Swindle Valens is getting body blocked by the Hasted Brax, what a play. Getting their bane out of there alive so cloud nine not one to be shown up <laughs> uh, okay can you teach me something how, how do you look at that courier's items no i don't know why did you you have to expose the one thing i don't know how to do you're meant to be able to oh hotkey it i'm so sorry yeah um you can hotkey it but my hotkeys are bound differently so i generally can't get it up uh, okay because i just wanted to know whose boots they were i presumed they were swindles yeah i think they were swindles it definitely how? wasn't because he got his bottle delivered the boots didn't transfer at the same time, so hmm. I'm guessing it's the supports. Maybe yeah. liches. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it to you. You can find out how to check courier items. It comes up so infrequently for me. Okay, I, I will check hotkeys. Oh yeah. I, I know I should bind it, but anyway, enough discussing our noobness and instead taking a look up at the lanes. There is definitely an advantage going around for all of complexity, but it is pretty slight considering they had the Roshan advantage. Mainly, I think we've got Broodmother Chessie. He is having a ball down here, and he can play super aggressively knowing that he has the Aegis for another minute at least. Might even get themselves a f sub five minute tower if he keeps working at it like this. Oh, Chessie all may right, just die I, I got nothing. to the tower. Okay, um, do you think it's worth it to die to the tower there? I mean, make sure the Aegis does get used instead of using it for a kill? Uh, what, what it had like 30 seconds, 50 ah. maybe left, so... Yeah, it probably, they yeah. Kill they killed it like before the game Dyer's even started, so it was really close. Attack. Probably just opting to get the instant respawn and the full life as opposed to playing on like really low life and letting the clock maybe bully him a bit. But he's actually on par on levels pretty much, so this is surprising. Really surprising, they're both level 6. I think the baby spiders, a couple of them have gone down to the rocket spam. Okay, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. So Fortunately, can... I was trying to figure out courier hotkeys. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, also, he's, he's maxing rocket flare, which is the typical build against a pusher. So Yeah, the courier hotkey stuff is interesting, we'll figure it out next game for you guys. Which will be tomorrow, I think we have some more stall out of Americas. But yeah, just the best of one today. Already off to a pretty interesting start, although everything has slowed down. Looking at these two lineups, if we have to go late game, Templar Assassin versus Alk and Gyrocopter. I mean, Queen of Pain has a lot of pure damage. Hook mid. Yeah, we got the first hook shot of the game. Swindle Melons, he's popping up those refractions. He needs to be eaten out of there. And now the Rocket Barrage taking all of that, but there's not enough follow-up damage. And Ritsu has TP'd for nothing, leaving top potentially unprotected. Actually, Brax is completely rotated up there. What yeah, you... I think they're just Green. doing a lane swap so the gyro gets a more favorable start because the elk can sustain in the lane with like bottle chemical rage. It is weird though. Yeah, it's a bit weird, especially because I feel like you put the elk mid to kind of help shut down Swindle Melons on that Templar Assassin. Completely changing up that lane gets rid of that advantage. Uh, he wasn't shutting him down at all though. Like they're, they're even on net worth, which. Okay, there's a 300 difference, but that's just bounty runes. It's right. actually getting heavily out CS'd. I'm just playing this matchup quite well, but it's really easy when you have like a free 400 gold advantage, depending if you got the last hit or not. Definitely. Yeah. 
I'm looking at the gold and experience, and there's actually a conspir and experience lead for complexity. I wonder how much of this is just lich? Probably Roche and lich together more than anything. Yeah. I don't know. is really underleveled. I actually don't have the hero levels hot keyed, but the Bane's level 2 as opposed to most of the supports on Cole being level 4, mm -hmm. which is probably the biggest difference than the Jaro as well. Yeah, uh, I pulled up the hero levels and Bane is only level 2. So while Jairo is level 4 compared to level 6 on Zizi, the other carry up there. So yeah, you're completely right about that. Although Vlad taking a massive amount of damage from Acid Spray, not really something a support can stand up to. No, but Quop's definitely trying and she's definitely not winning the trade. Yeah, I feel like this is definitely, it turns out, Probably a better lane even for the Alk since they're no longer running the try. Having Z Freak roaming on that Lich, I think, puts them at a bit of a disadvantage. What complexity at yeah. a disadvantage? Because I don't think the Lich is really getting them any ganks, and now up top, the Alchemist, he's farming pretty freely. See this ancient stack that Swindle's just about to take? Yeah. This warrants exactly what Lich has been doing. He's just been stacking the entire oh. time, and now he gets to take his XP middle. He's going to get an early level 6, and then he's going to be able to burst down the Gyrocopter or the Elf with both spells. Yeah. Hopefully he puts a few more levels in his Q now, though, as opposed to going for more in the E. It's a very interesting thing. We've been seeing a lot of different builds out of Liches. We've actually been seeing folks max W. I don't know if it's that important this game, since they're not against a Slaughter, but having the Frost Armor up against the Acid Spray, maybe something they prioritize, and Zizzy's going to jump away from that unstable concoction. But as you talked about Swindle Melons, he's going to... I mean, you're dealing with an Alk, and both Swindle Melons, Zizzy, and the Broodmother are keeping up. Chessy on that Broodmother. I mean, this is not good for an Alk. You want to be ahead. I'm not sure about his... I know he got the first bounty rune, but I haven't seen him get any since. Maybe he got one at like the four minute mark. Oh, but we have a hook shot. most of your income. In mid, on the Lich and Z Freak is going down. He didn't have the ult yet. So close, so far. Wasn't able to get that off and the TP cancelled as well. And down bottom, Tusk actually TP'd out at the last moment. No extra heal bomb to kill him off. So they'll get the bottom tower in exchange. And Lich still not level six. That's really good for Cloud9 though. Only losing a support Lich while they take an Ancient Stack and the Tier 1 tower bottom, that's like as much as you can ask for. Yeah, things working out really well. Now in this game, I wouldn't be surprised if Zizi, I don't know if Orchid is the play here. This game is full of pauses. Very uh, intense, best of one, I would argue. Just the pauses really ramping up the hype. Um, I wanted to say, for Zizzy, normally we see Quops try to go Orchid first. Zizzy definitely has good farm. And Orchid here, if you can get it off before the Alk pops Chemical Rage, you're going to kill him. How do you feel about going a Sheep Stick instead, though? I think Sheep might just be a bit too late. Orchid does the job, as you said. They have two defensive supports that can kind of deal with the Orchid or the Sheep. Just through defensive sleeps or a Snowball, though. He's... Oh, to pick up the rope, so. We have a smoke into a smoke. We're gonna have a cooldown, but Z for Cinder Melons ignoring that with his refractions, and here comes Chessie. So many babies. Smash TPs coming out from Cloud9, but it won't be enough, and now they're going in one by one, and they might just die one by one. Where's the heal bomb coming out onto MSS? Not that big of a bomb, but I still think he's gonna go down to all these slows. The battery assault trying to do work, but it's not enough. Unstable concoction slowing down his death, but he's going to fall. Brax thinking about feeding off the spiders, actually getting quite a few with that acid spray, and Z Freak now pretty low, but here comes Swindle He'll have refractions up in six seconds and he is ready to fight. Will they unstable concoction him though? No time for the melt strike and the dust as well. He's having his refractions burnt through by the acid spray and the nightmare coming out. Sundermelons blocked out here. Does he have the support? There's a shallow grave if he needs it. When's it gonna come out? They're waiting, they're waiting. They heal him up. Here it goes. There's the shallow grave TP. Unstable concoction. Sundermelons, he should have juked. He didn't manage to get out and he's gonna fall. So a big kill for the lineup of C9 while Chessie is scouting their stacks and farming them. I think as soon as they saw that stack, that there was just a lapse in judgment, and they were like, can we take this, can we not? They tried, and then they saw the respawns coming out from Cloud9, and they realized it was a mistake. Only losing the one hero there for the private engagement is pretty good. Oh, Chessie at, at manages to dodge the dust coming out there and get some of the experience on that creep wave, so really nice, and again, complexity. Lads. Putting themselves at an advantage. What were you saying? There's a Vlad's on Chessie as well now. 
Interesting. I really wanted to go for the early fight. Radiant's mm -hmm. middle tower also an interesting build. I wasn't sure if he might pick up an Orchid as well, trying to maybe let Zizzy go for uh, Aghanims for more damage output. But this will work too. And as you said, early fight, Swindlemelons would love to have his damage all buffed up. Yeah, again, just flat cannon and acid spray damage mitigation against those things is good. It also helps them take Roshan again, which is exactly what they're looking to do. Now Brood's level 10, levels up the ultimate, just goes in with a few spiders and the Lich is set to health. Yeah. It's definitely more obvious this time, but despite that, Rocket actually being thrown into their jungle, they're trying to... F they expect that Chessie will be doing their jungle, maybe not expecting... I mean... It's 11 minutes. They have to know the Roche is back up, for sure. A bit confused, but here comes the rocket scouting the Roche on. I think it is too late. Even if Clockwork rotates for a hookshot in now, not going to make it. So another Aegis, the way of complexity, and this time on Swindle. Yeah, I like that. I think he's the one who's going to have to play up and aggressive. Chessie has defense uh, and escape mechanisms at this point. Yeah, I, I liked it on the start at Chessie because it, he knew he was in the one-on-one -on -one matchup from how they were laning which gives him an advantage. But as you say, TA is pretty much based around having an Aegis for her aggression to be able to work out. Yeah. So, Frax, he's walking towards that Radiance. I don't know if it'll be too little too late. It'll certainly help them form spiders. And looks like Gyrocopter might be going for a casual braces, maybe even a drums. A bit surprised he would go Aquila and drums. It feels like he needs to get online faster. I don't think he can, though, because at the moment... <laughs> So far behind the enemy cores, and the Elk is taking a lot of space as well. And there's already very little space because Chessie's taking three to four camps in your jungle. He's pushing a lane in constantly that someone has to deal with, which might not always be you. So yeah. the bracer into drums is probably just the most valuable. In make use of his money. That sentence really didn't work, but yep. you get what I mean. We have an engagement middle. They're going to manage to pick off two. I caught the tail end of that. Uh, we, I was too busy lamenting all the spiders that uh, 1437 managed to pick up, but Radiant holy cow, stops. complexity. I don't think they're quite snowballing Radiant's yet, but they're doing a really good job attack. of applying pressure everywhere and continually ganking the alchemist. This alchemist is Radiant's behind the net worth top. of both Swindlemelons and Chessie. You can't play an alchemist from behind. That is not what the tier hero was made for. Before that happened as well, I was just going to say, he's doing a decent job, at least keeping Dyer's on par. Because it's not easy to keep on par when you're this far behind. As yeah. you said, he needs to be ahead. We are now looking at a 7.5 thousand gold deficit for the team with the Alchemist, and also 10 thousand experience. The levels on the lineup of Complexity are just outpacing them. They don't even have an ult on Bane. Now, I do think Fiend's Grip can help tone some of this around, but it's really rough for Cloud9 right now. I actually might find Ritsu here, he doesn't have a TP for 5 seconds. I like the play he's making, but doing this without a TP is unfortunately death. Yep, and he is 3 shot down, I mean, albeit he was super low. <laughs> Holy Hannah. Um, I love it, I love it. <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't want to fly in the flame, so I'm just going to take a look down bottom where they're snowballing in on Chessie. There's a dust, there's a hook shot, looking like Chessie's in a lot of trouble, but he pops that ult. Can he do enough healing using that ult? And it looks like it's a no, but he is going to stick it out for ages. Shallow Grave, where is it? Chessie gets the kill. He does go down, unfortunately. Vlad, no, he's still alive. He got Nightmare. They thought he was dead. And Vlad actually taking the Nightmare. Are they going to get toner on kills on all of this? This could just be the game ending go. And now MSS looking like he's going to go down to a spider spit that'll come out if Chessie can get in range. There it goes. And that is a dead clockwork. I thought for sure Chessie was dead there. But they just. That's the Vlad's and Treads coming in and the level advantage as well. That's yeah. probably. Level 2 is hunger. Yeah, like level 12 at this point for a brood is really, really quick pace. A Dazzle being MVP there, giving him the ability to keep going with the heal and then also giving him the mana to be able to secure the kill because yeah. his soul ring was on cooldown. Just really well played, and they might get another kill. Sindel's coming in from the back lines. He's got a haste. There's nowhere for Brax to fall, and they're falling aboard at the seams. I wanted an even game, but we are looking at complexity rolling Cloud9 and looking like they're going to be the ones advancing. Swindlemelons has up his Daedalus. We haven't had time for an item recap, but they are way ahead. Brax still working towards that Radiance, but he's over a thousand gold from it. 15 minutes in, we've got Swindlemelons. Desolator, Radiant Queen of Pain. Oh gosh, I missed someone go down up top. They kill off Zizzy. Oh sorry, they kill off Ritsu again. 
bottom. They're trying to go into the Lich, but unfortunately the Tusk goes too far after the force away from the Lich. Feeds away his own life, and now the tower's going to fall as well. I don't know what to say here for Cloud9. It feels like you need a mistake. Level 1 rush. Yeah. I mean, that of course had a lot of game impact. Maybe they can get some smart smokes. They do have some high ground defense. Ice shards, acid spray, rocket flare. I don't think high ground's the problem for complexity right now. They're quite happy to just take map control. Because what they're doing is... Jesse does it right. He'll have like a spider sitting here. They have a ward right now, so that's not necessary. Maybe one in kind of one of these spots. He'll try and take as much of the woods away from Cloud9 as they can. Swindle can take a lane plus Ancients away from them. Then the rest of their cores will just continue to get bigger. Oh, Swindle says Blunk on to Ritsu and three shots him. Also has a DD. That seems hardly fair, but that's Dota for you. Runes winning games. And when you have control of the map, you, you'll eventually get a good rune, and then things like that will happen. 100%. Um, that's a very nice way to look at it. Brax on the bottom lane. Chessy BKB's up. I don't think oh, he can catch out to Brax, so that was a 10 second BKB used for nothing at the top lane. They kill off Bane, though. And yeah, that was the uh, 10 you... second BKB. I used to be a huge advocate for power treads on Brood because it just feels like it's Radiant's better. But after seeing that, it's like, no, no, no. I understand why phase is a thing now because yeah. he just got so blocked by his spiders. And very hard to micro though. You can try to move them all to the side, but they're in a big group. You'd have to like individually select a bunch of spiders, move them off to the side. It, it would be rough. Zizzy has got his Orchid up. Can we just talk some item pickups? I want a second in the Radiant's action, but we're actually at a kill a minute, attack. even though it's super one-sided. Four stuff out on Z-Freak. Vlad's has his own, has his medallion 15 minutes in. We already talked about Chessie's BKB. Swindles has his blink up. Um, and on Cloud9, what have they got? They've got an urn. They've got the workings of a four stuff on MSS. They don't even have the drums complete Radiant's on Ritsu. Radiance oh. is done on Brax, though, and we'll see if this can start saving the day. Needs one or two more items on top of this, so for it to matter, it's just a farming tool. Decent at fighting when you pick it up at 12 minutes, because any like 5 6k gold item is good at 12 minutes, but at 18 minutes, it's just a bit subpar. Basically, you do need to be slightly careful Radiance with how far they take attack. these fights, but yeah. if they're disciplined, I, I really think Cloud9 are gonna have a hard time getting back into this game. Yeah, we're at a 20,000 net worth deficit and 20,000 experience lead for complexity. Sorry, Cloud9 is at the deficit. As you said, the map control as well, they see everything on complexity. Swindle's thinking about going for top, but because of this deep ward, he can see all of the rotations that C9 is standing behind their farmer. So actually, they were smoked up, so I he may have seen the smoke go down. Gosh, that sucks. Just be game sense. Yeah, knowing that actually trying bait, to break it now. Okay, never mind, he just misblinked into the high ground. Yeah. One thing I think Cloud9 could do to put themselves at a chance is buy a gem. It's extremely risky, but they should know these wards are a thing right now. And that's the only way they uh, Except for smokes, obviously, but you don't want to be expending a smoke just to be able to get out on the map. Yeah, and speaking of smokes, they just used one there. They don't have another one for 30 seconds. They're losing their last tier 2. Cloud9. Radiance and not even all of this feels like, I mean, maybe you could argue all of this came from the early Roshan, but also just feels like the gyrocopter pick being underwhelming Dyer's in this set top like top we've seen in other series. It was only underwhelming though because the, the lane he was in was just at an instant disadvantage. I, I'm pretty sure Bane, Tusk, and Gyro, they'll do fine in that lane. They'll be able to get one or two kills if Lexity missed her. But Dyer's when you have the levels up on the heroes, Pop's going to have Blink plus a spell at the first creep wave. Lich is going to have either armor and sacrifice or his nuke and sacrifice. And then the Dazzle has both defensive spells. You just can't. And yeah. that's why the hero didn't snowball at all this game. I hadn't seen this yet, but Vlad on the Dazzle has a higher net worth than the Gyrocopter. Uh, it's just how this game's going when every tower's down. He hasn't had to buy the wards. I think it's Z-Freak who's been doing it. Oh yeah, Z-Freak is definitely in full on uh, I am the 5 position <laughs> support right now. I think it's normally Vlad that plays for 5 position support, but I think they want to opt for him to get Solar Crest. Because it, it's such a strong sieging item and it's also really good against heroes if they try to man fight. Now, can't is... deal with the mischance. 
Yeah, there is something to be said for Cloud9 has pretty decent late game lineup. I don't know how the Templar Assassin co-op stack up. At the same time, they're gonna lose another Roshan, no defense in sight, and I don't even think they could go and contest this. So another one onto Templar Assassin. I think this is all complexity needs to siege high ground. Maybe 16 on the Brood as well. But other than that, yeah, I agree. So. But as far as the late game thing goes, this is something that a lot of people might disagree with, but Brood's actually the hardest carry in this game. It's just that she normally doesn't itemize as a carry. She has an inbuilt attack modifier that isn't an attack modifier that does a lot when you don't have BKB or MPB. She has a lot of lifesteal and plus damage from her ultimate, which is generally up for as long as the fight lasts. Whereas Cloud9, they just scale through being ahead via items. They have good farming tools between the Alk and the Gyro. But when they're actually on par with Cloud, uh, sorry, Flexity's heroes, they're not far enough ahead to be able to fight them. We have mass TP rotations coming up. Bottom Brax charging up that unstable concoction does land on Chessy, but he doesn't care. And now they're going to take out the sigil. They don't quite manage to get it, so that's something. But they are more than ready for this high ground siege, and it looks like, yeah, they're just going to send Chessy in Dyer's mid. Let's put pressure on all of their towers. Attack. They can pick one to defend. They can't save them all. Even DD on Swindle for a while. They don't have Bop right now, though. She opted to TP back and push out a lane. Coming back, and then they'll go when she's closer, I think. Probably wants that BKB up, as you mentioned earlier. Just making sure that there's no way she can be locked down by the lineup of Cloud9. Although Hookshot, of course, still goes through that. But Chessie putting pressure on that mid lane. They've pushed out top a little bit with Quap up there. So at least it won't be pushing onto their tower anytime soon. And now Zizzy, of course, has an Invis rune. Gonna be slow, methodical play from Cloud9. Uh, sorry, from Complexity, I think. We've got a call down, Chris, uh, Chessie, say goodbye to your spiders, but this tower's already at half health. Swindle still has the Aegis. We have a Sonic Wave coming out from Zizzy. I think it killed off the Bane, but other than that, looks like it completely whiffed. And now there's no lockdown that goes through those BKBs with Bane down. Clock Hookshot might be able to do something, but what angle is he's going to get it off? And the Rax is falling. Now, I do think an Alk might be able to deal with supers better than some of the other heroes, but at the same time, if they can get another lane here, I think it's firmly in Complexity's favor. Unfortunately, the DD's out now, but as you say, they still have both BKBs. Oh, sorry, all three Deso BKBs. Yeah. This tower melting before the Deso. They're charging up another Radiant unstable concoction. Rax does Deso. throw it, but Swindle blinks away from the rest of his team, and they're going to be happy with one Rax. Really disciplined play coming out of complexity. I really like seeing this. They know that they are massively ahead, and if they make a mistake, the opponent, their opponents, Cloud9, will get about 5,000 gold swing. Were you watching the MFF game earlier? on Dream League. No, I wasn't able to catch that one. They were about 20,000 gold behind, and MFF this is, and uh, what, who are they playing? For CL, ended up throwing it away, and it kind of went back to even. Complacency making sure they don't do that, which yeah. is nice to see. Very disciplined. It's something I think that is a bit arguably different in the Western and Chinese scene, maybe because of how they practice, but the Chinese teams always just seem to be a bit more patient, a bit more disciplined. Yes, it does sometimes lead us to longer games, but it leads to you winning Dota. Yeah, most of the time it's mistakes that will lose you games as opposed to good play winning you games. If you can eliminate the mistakes and the other teams making mistakes, Pretty simple who's going to win the matchups. Sanjan yep. Yasha up on the Broodmother, we'll see what else she decides to go. For her Radiant's fighting lineup, but here comes a smoke from the lineup of Cloud9. Can they do anything? Hookshot onto Vlad's if they can lock him down, but so many spiders, they're not getting the stuns. And now the cooldown. Yes, Chessie is BKB'd. He's taking a lot of damage, but maybe it's not enough. Here comes the ult from Lich. Brax sharing it with 1437, and it comes back to him. Chessie could just finish off one of them. He goes for one. They're managing to pick off the Lich. Vlad still has that shallow grave, I believe, and in comes Izzy. Picks off the, unsta uh, the chemical raged up Alchemist, and there is no more to do. He does have buyback. MSS just auto attack down super fast. They got the TP out save on the gyrocopter, but now Swindle Melon's working on their racks, and there is that buyback that we talked about. They have to use these, or there's no more hope. They've already lost the ranged racks in middle, and Swindle Melon's, he still has Aegis, although only, I think, for about 30 more seconds. He has to be a little bit careful here. Maybe time to burn it, but it might be too close if he tries to burn it. A team like Cloud9 is going to keep an eye on when exactly that Aegis comes up. How many shots can he do on MSS? It would have been a three shot, but not able to get it. Now Brax with the unstable concoction. Swindle Melon's going to take quite a bit of damage. That Aegis, he has to 
be really careful on when it expires and will we be seeing him go down? There's a call down. Ice Shard's trying to block the rest of them down. Swindle Melons might actually fall here and lose his Aegis. He has to die here soon or he needs help from his team. He's desperately trying to die to the creeps so they're killing them too fast and this Aegis, it's gonna expire. I think they're just gonna back off, wait for the heal to tick in. Yeah, As there we said. go. Good timing, and now they're gonna look for Rico, maybe? Oh, there was the regen. Swindle is all the way back up. Zizzy, he's back and ready. He doesn't have his ult, but he has more than enough damage. They can see you through those Glimmer Gapes. Let's see if they can do any sort of thing. They dropped the sentries finally, and look at the Cloud9 heroes melting. We got a snowball, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough, and Swindle's that Ghost Scepter is down. He's actually stunned up, but Gyrocopter falls. There are buybacks now, except on the Gyrocopter. If they kill off the rest of these heroes, it's just GG, and there's the call. We're done with this best of one, this tiebreaker, totally done. And despite, I would argue, the ping disadvantage, we're gonna see complexity come moving forward. <laughs> the shots. I, I, I think if you're playing a elimination match, it's something you should maybe look to check. The, the level one Roshi the general. <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> Any lineup can do it, it's just how much, uh time you have to put into it and it is a game winning thing like i'm pretty sure how nine would have been really happy with their draft and the lanes might not have gone like massively in their favor i feel like the clock and brood lane would have cancelled out eventually elk and ta would probably just go far more in the end but they're probably winning the tri lane yeah. and then they'll be fine but because level one roche that all just got turned on its head and it got fucked up 100 percent now, I'm going to, we'll do a quick word from the sponsor. We actually will be able to interview someone from Complexity. We can ask them about the level one Roshan strat. It looks like we'll be doing that through Discord. So, uh, actually, I have the link now. So on PQ, I don't know if I'll be able to get you in here, but I'm going to go interview them. Do you have any questions you want me to make sure we ask them? Uh, ask him if the level one Rosh was pre-planned or if it's something they went into the draft thinking they could do and then decided towards the end it was feasible. Okay. I don't think you make muted llama. Oh, and okay, I am in. We're going to be doing the interview right quick um, once again. Hello, I think I've Should I put is this Hello? I believe It's my in. idea. It was my idea. <laughs> Hello, can you hear Actually, me? Actually, it's not. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? Uh, not much. I was going to ask. We wanted to ask about the level 1 Roshan. The thing that really impressed me there was I feel like you've run a very similar lineup to that one and you didn't do the Roshan that time. I believe you ran this almost exact lineup in one of the games I casted, but Zizzy was on a different hero. And, uh, uh yeah. So whose idea was the level 1 Roshan? <laughs> Well, oh, I was so confused, wait, I just listened to the cast yeah. and then they heard two voices from me. I was like, what the fuck's yeah, going still, on? She's in, disc she's in Discord with me right now, Chester. That's what I mean, I was talking Jeez. to her. Okay. Alright, oh, okay, Whoa. never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't, I didn't actually right. hear everyone's, what he said. Everyone, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Everyone's, in, everyone's very happy. They think that was absolutely hilarious because Ritsu's actually... So angry, he's been messaging me even during the game about how terrible I am, and it's fucking hilarious. Why? Why do you have people on your <laughs> friends list who say that? <laughs> well, it's Ritsu. He was playing the game, and it's like you can't do anything when you get level one roached. You yeah. just can't. Yeah. And um, it was my idea, but I got to give a shout out to my dad, uh, my dad Papa Freak, because he's been telling me to get the team to do a level one roche for fucking I don't know how long, a really really long time since my first for three years easily and we were just like you know what yesterday i was in a pretty good mood like hey guys i know let's just fucking level one roche and we selected first pick because we felt like if we picked dire it'd be too obvious and luckily they chose radiant and then yeah i don't know so now we just uh we have to win though there's still like a bunch of tournament left yeah and, this um, is i don't just... think we'll get away with that again this was just a tiebreaker match. A lot of people were asking, uh, yeah, they were thinking, like, you're through to the land of this one. This was just a tiebreaker. Um, I feel like both of the America groups really stacked, really good team showing. So I wanted to ask, when there was the pause, were you guys scared? Like, at the very beginning of the game, there was a pause, and then you guys all immediately say, good luck, have fun. Were you guys worried that they were on to you? <laughs> what was the deal? No, it was just a timing thing. We were gonna type it anyway, and we were just like, "Oh, geez, if this t if this pause is two minutes or more, we're just rude." But it worked out, so we'll take it. 
Yeah, it definitely seemed to work out. And how much do you think, level one Roshan, obviously huge game impact. Do you really think it's just something that wins you the game? Or do you think it's actually... Uh, what would you say is like 98%? 90, what's your win percentage if you level one Roche? Okay, real fucking high is the response. <laughs> so we're going to just go with like 98% because it's still very throwable. The way it works is that Roche gives you a massive advantage in the lanes and I would say at least one team fight advantage. So you would only really lose the game if you get outlaned anyway or if someone throws like if you if you have like two or three deaths in the laning phase and then you know your first move fails let's say you go like you trade three of you for one mm -hmm. of them then the game is back to even but it, it's just such a huge buffer and if you get ahead and like i think that game was like one zero at eight minutes we i took yeah. an ancient stack at seven like you can only do that because you're so ahead in the game so it really just accelerates everybody's timing as well so it's hard because they have to do something to stop us, but at the same time, they're really far behind. So, yep. it's, um, We yeah. also wanted to ask about putting the Aegis on Chessie. It felt like it would have made maybe more sense, well, not more sense either way. I feel like you put it on a hero that you know can get something done with it, and I don't think maybe Chessie had the opportunity to use it. He kind of burned it bottom to keep getting more push on the tower to get that second life up just to regen and push. Um, Is there some better way to use it? No, I don't think so. We took a tip from uh, our old teammates in OG that you pretty much just give the Aegis to the guy with the highest MMR. And luckily for us, he's also from Europe. So <laughs> we figure we just give him the Aegis. And then he, you know, in the rare event that someone with such high MMR would die, then he would just respawn and probably kill everybody. Does Chessie have 8,000 matchmaking points? I, I didn't know Chessie he would. He would. He doesn't get to play enough. Okay. In spirit. In spirit, 8,000 matchmaking points striking again. So that's always nice to see. Um, do you guys, I know there's, as you said, a lot of playoffs to go. Do you guys worry? You said you can't use the strat again. Is it something where you can fake it out? Uh, I think the infamous play being Alliance kind of faked out a level one Roshan and then actually got a bunch of kills off the back of it. Is it something where now that you've done it, maybe you can make teams think you're doing it, but instead team fight them at the Rosh pit? Um, I mean, I can't reveal our okay. strategies. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, that actually makes total, total sense. But yeah, um, do you have any kind of other final words? Not really. Just, um, it was only a tiebreaker, so we kind of have to, like, play real Dota against them. Probably actually later today, we're going to play them in the Summit qualifiers, so we'll yeah. see what happens there. Good luck in that one. Sure. You guys have, yeah, Cloud9 again, and there's also other Summit games. Um, do you have any shout-outs, final things? Not really. Thanks for casting. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah. And uh, shout-out to 322. <laughs> I always have a lot of fun casting all of you guys, especially you guys who are very willing to give interviews. And once again, congratulations. Good luck in your matches later on today. Hopefully you've got them. you got the mind games ready for Cloud9 if you're facing them up or whoever else you're facing later today uh, with this win. And good luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. And with that, guys, we will be ending the broadcast. I hope you enjoyed. I need to actually go cut all the VODs because this is the second interview we've had. Thank you, Complexity, for giving us that interview. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, uh, I think we're done now. There will be some of the summit going on, and I hope you all have fun watching that because they're getting very close to determining who's attending the summit. So peace out, folks.